Hey guys, this is Leah with Scott Leroy Marketing and in today's tip video I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to take uh, when you go under contract with your transaction in command. Okay, so these will just be the general steps that you would take when you go under contract. However, each office has a slightly different policy on what they want you to do when you go under contract. So of course, if your office staff says something slightly different than I do, of course, always go with your office staff. Um, but this will, in general, give you an idea of what steps you need to take when you go under contract. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is locate my opportunity. Um, so you can do that in a couple different ways. I really like to search for my opportunity from the contact record. So if you want to search your database um, in command, that second icon down for the contact name, you'll be able to view the opportunity on the right hand side of the contact record right under here if you have one. Okay, so that's one way to find your opportunity. Or you can also go to the opportunity section of command directly. Um, so you can do that by clicking on the handshake icon on the left hand side on the command toolbar. And that will take you over to your opportunities. So this is my opportunity pipeline here. Okay, And let's say I'm going to take my uh, active listing and that is going under contract. Okay, So I have this opportunity already created. Um, if you need steps on how to start a transaction in command, I'll include a short 20 minute overview in the uh, description of this YouTube video. So you can click on that to check out those steps. All right, but again, this is just when you go under contract, what the steps would be. All right, so first things first, how you move your opportunity down the pipeline, right? Because right now I have that under the active phase. So I need to go ahead and put that under the under contract phase instead. You can do that right from your pipeline by clicking on the six dots in a rectangle on the left hand side of the opportunity. And you'll see when you do that and click and hold your mouse, it'll you know start following your mouse and it will turn the under contract phase, give that a dotted line so I can hover my mouse over it. I want it to turn blue. Okay, make sure to look for that. Look for that to turn blue before releasing your mouse and then it will place that under contract. So I can go ahead and click on under contract here to view that opportunity. Now, if you're still working on moving the opportunity under contract, of course, feel free to pause the video anytime to catch up, okay, or to follow along. That's the helpful thing about these recorded YouTube videos is you can pause it and do it with me. So feel free. All right, but I'm going to show you one other way that you can move your opportunity down your pipeline. You can do that from the details section of your opportunity, which is where we need to go next anyway. So to access that, let's go ahead and uh, click on the opportunity name. So go ahead and simply click on the opportunity name to open that up to access the opportunity details. So again, I'm just clicking on that teal link. It says the opportunity name to open up the details. I just wanna let you know that you can update the opportunity phase and stage right from the details as well by clicking the pencil icon um, to the right of general information. So you can click on it there and you can also move your opportunity under contract that way. All right, so aside from moving your opportunity to the correct phase on your opportunity pipeline, I right, will also need to submit our executed documents to your market center for review. So where we do that from is from the documents tab of your opportunity. So just to clarify, the opportunities documents tab, okay, so right here, this is used between the agent and your market center to submit your forms for review. Okay, so that you can get your commission check. So again, the opportunity section or the document section of your opportunity will be to submit your signed documents to your market center staff for compliance review so you can get your paycheck. Okay. And if you're wondering how DocuSign and or dot loop works with this whole transaction system, all right, you will be able to click start a transaction on the right hand side to go ahead and pick one or the other. Okay, so if you are using DocuSign or if you are using um, DotLoop, you'll want to go ahead and pick one of those from the drop down. Just a heads up, uh, once you select one or the other, there's no going back. 
right? So if you're using DocuSign, that's fine. Or if you're using dot loop, that's perfectly fine. But just a heads up, what dot loop or DocuSign is being used for is to access your blank forms, fill out your forms, and send those to your client to be electronically signed. So again, the document section of DocuSign is being used between the agent and the client to pull in your forms, fill them out, and have that electronically signed. Once you have those signed, right, when you're under contract, you'll have those executed. That's when you'll want to add those directly to the command document section because that's when you would want to submit that for review. So let me add real quick an executed contract just so I can show you guys what it looks like um, when you do truly add that to your opportunity. Right, because if we're under contract, at the very least, we have an executed contract in here that we need to go ahead and add to our command opportunity to submit for review. So from here, what we do Okay. If you do not already see a checklist displaying on your screen, you'll want to go ahead and click right here. Okay. It may either say select checklist, or I've seen some offices default on one checklist or the other. Um, so go ahead and click on whatever it may say here. Click on the drop down arrow to select, make sure you're on the correct checklist. And that's simply all these are. These are not the actual forms, these are placeholders. Just a checklist to let you know what forms need to be added in order for you to get your commission check. Now, depending on the, um, depending on whichever checklist you picked, you might have a listed folder on the left-hand side under contract and closed. Now, these are added in by your office staff, so if something looks slightly different on my screen than yours, that's why this is customized based on your market center. Just a heads up on that. Um, so right here though, you can go ahead and select the checklist that you're wanting to add your forms for. So if this is under contract and I wanna add my offer to purchase in here, I can come into that checklist on the left-hand side and I can either click add a file on the right to add one file at a time or I can click attach multiple files at the top. And that's typically more efficient, especially if you need to add in more than one. All right, so I'll click attach multiple files. And I have two options here. I can either pull that in from my computer. So if you have the fully signed offer or whatever the form might be on your computer because you got it hand signed and then scanned it in, great. You can go ahead, search your computer, double click on the you know offer or whatever the form is on your computer to pull that in. You can also drag and drop that. All right, so again, if that's saved on your computer, you can use the manual option or the DocuSign option tends to be easier. So as long as you have started your transaction in command and then clicked start a transaction where my mouse is right here to go ahead and create that DocuSign room or that loop and dot loop, you'll have this feature. It'll either say DocuSign or dot loop. Right, if you created your loop from dot loop directly or your room from DocuSign directly, right, you will not have this option. And unfortunately there's no way to change that outside of creating a new opportunity but no biggie, you can just manually add your forms for this one, but now you know. Um, so in this case, I'll go ahead and pick DocuSign since I have that option. And what that does is it would search my DocuSign room, any signed forms that I might have in my DocuSign room. So I can go ahead and click on that from the dropdown to link that up right away. All right, so you can really just go down this list here and link it up all the required forms and click to attach that. All right, so typically when you want to be submitting to your market center for review, okay, and I'm just again going to tell you the general policy of when to submit to your market center for review. So if your market center staff has a slightly different policy, please, please, please make sure you listen to them, of course. All right, but in general, when you submit to your market center for review, so where my mouse is, that green button there, if you're representing the buyer, you'll typically submit to your MC for review twice once when you go under contract, and once when you close. If you are representing the listing, you will typically submit your um, opportunity or review three times. Once when the listing goes live in the MLS, second time when you go under contract, and a third time when you close. 
And of course, each time you're submitting for review, you want to have all of your, ex your executed paperwork added to your checklist, okay? And if you don't have those, you know, if you have most of them all but one, you know, you can always come back in and add that in until, and still submit to your MC for review. All right, so with that being said, all right, as I'm talking about, you need the required paperwork in there, you know, before submitting to your MC for review. One extra thing you need to do when you go under contract is submit a commissions request to your market center. Um, so this commissions request, if you haven't used it quite yet, is the equivalent of a green sheet in my KW. So essentially what it is is just telling your market center how you're getting paid. Are you splitting the commission check with another agent in your office because you co-listed it? Do you have to pay an outside referral of 25%? Okay, whatever the case may be, your office will receive your commission check and needs to know how to cut that, and you can indicate that on the commissions tab. Now, as you're seeing, that's grayed out, right? So that is grayed out until you submit an offer and accept an offer. So to do that, I'll go ahead and click the Offers tab. And it looks like I was practicing in here before, all right? but uh, this is, uh, you can just ignore that. Yours will probably be blank if you're coming in there here for the first time. But this is great for you to see in the case of a multiple offer situation, how you're gonna be able to see each of your offers separately so you can easily compare and contrast the offer details before accepting. Now hold tight on your questions on that. I'm going to walk you through adding a new offer in and then submitting a commission request. So first things first, so under offers, we'll go ahead and click add new offer. You can name this whatever you would like to. I usually like to add in the buyer's name if I'm or the other client's name and click create offer. Now a couple steps we have to do here. Um, we have to go ahead and make sure that the offer and close dates are correct. If you have not already linked up your listing to the opportunity, it may prompt you to put in the listing address as well. And then you can click the next button. Okay, so you can see we're going down this pipeline right here to complete this. So we're clicking next for the next part. And just something to note, anytime you're filling out anything in command, um, look for the red stars, right? These are a bunch of fields. You do not have to fill them all out. You only have to fill in the fields with the red star that's required to go next. So that cuts down quite a bit. So let's say I'll put the buyer's name is BB Buffet. And then the uh, listing associate, I'll put in there. Okay, so these are really the only fields we need. And then we can click for next for the terms. So you can see we're almost through this pipeline here. So now we're on the terms. And of course, guys, feel free to pause it. If you're following along and want to do it with me, that's absolutely fine. All right, so for the terms here, we'll put in the cash amount. Let's say it's 100,000. They're financing 200,000 for a sales price of 300,000. I know there's no red star here, but that is required. So you will need to fill that out. So let's say I'll put in the earnest money, what is 1%? Right, whatever these details might be, right? You should have all of this from your offer. And then click the next for agent analysis. And this is just really for your internal analysis. So you can put, you know, pros are, you know, large cash amounts, cons, it's contingent, or whatever the case may be. These are your internal notes for agent analysis, and I can click save. All right, so back to being able to compare these offers, right? Now that I have that entered in, I can see that easily, especially in a multiple offers situation. I am seeing this as a new feature, so let's take a look at this together. So I'm gonna check all these and click compare offers, to see what we get. Ooh, very cool. I will make another tip video on this. You can email the offer comparison as well. All right, guys, tip video to come on this. All right, so here we are um, with all of our offers. Now, in order for this commissions tab to be become available, you do need to accept an offer. And the great news is a lot of what you just entered in will autofill to your commission request, so you don't have to refill in that info. So I just clicked accept, 
on the right hand side. And when I did that, it went ahead and created this commissions tab, kept that available or made it available. And now I can come in here and fix up all of this information or enter in the rest of the information. I've been talking too much today. All right, so checking out the beginning, right? This is where all the general information, this is all being pulled from the offer details we put in. So that's taken care of. We're good to go on that. All right, the real nitty gritty stuff gets coming when uh, you scroll down slightly and you'll be able to see your agent gross commission, how much you're getting of that, and so forth. And if you scroll down further, you'll see that broken down, how much you're paying in royalty, how much you're paying in company dollar. Now, just a heads up, you are not able to edit these fields right here. Um, it's, it's generated by the system. So when, you're, when you go and actually, I'm sorry, when your MCA actually receives your commission check and cuts that, that will automatically pull from the system in live time. However, if you do not think that something looks correct in here, I would just add a note. There's a note right here. You can add a note to your MCA to have them, you know, keep an eye on company dollar to make sure that is populating correctly. But there are some, there is some information in here that you can edit. So let's take a look at that. So on the right hand side of my name, I see edit agent payment. Let's click on that. So to the right of your name, edit agent payment. All right, so from here, I see my gross commission. I can see how much is being taken out in royalty and company dollar. So you can see that's not editable. However, you can contribute if you donate to KW Cares. You can go ahead and add that in here. And one more thing for you guys to know in here, when you click on add item on the very bottom, this is where you can go to add in referrals, bonuses, deductions, or concessions. So if I click on add item here, Let's say in this case, I need to pay an outside referral of 25%. I would select the outside referral option. Putting in the referral percentage, it will calculate that and I will need to fill in the, you know, the red starred fields here in order to add that. Okay, and if you have questions on this, your MCA will be able to guide you on where to get these items. So that's where you would add in like an outside referral, for example, under add items. Now, one more thing to add, let's talk about if you are splitting this transaction with another agent in your office, let's say, you know, you're co-listing the property. So you're on the same side of the transaction. That's what you're filling out the commission request for, your side of the transaction. So let's say uh, you're splitting this with a team member, 50-50, or your rainmaker, whatever the case may be. Let's say you're getting 70%. Oh. So wait, let me explain this real quick before I change it. Um, so this unit number right here, this is really important for what we're about to discuss. So anytime you sell a home, it's always going to be one unit, one transaction, one property. So in order to break up the commission between you and another agent, you need to adjust the unit number first. So if you're receiving 70% and the other agent is receiving 30%, maybe it's a showing agent, whatever the case may be, I will go ahead and put change the unit to 0 0.70 for 70%. I can click to calculate my commission, and it will update that, and I can save it. So here I see the agent unit and the adjusted commission. Okay, I also see these errors, so it won't let me submit until I add in the second agent here. So to do that, I'll go ahead and click add another agent next to payment. I can go ahead and search for another agent. These are only agents in your office. So again, this is talking about if you're the agent on the same side of the transaction, you're splitting the transaction, splitting the commission check, splitting the work, I hope. <laughs> All right, and you can add in the remaining units. So since I did 0.7, now it's 0.3. And I can go ahead, of course, you can add in the KW Cares or any outside referrals for this agent as well and click Save Changes. There they are. So now I can scroll on up and I can click submit whenever I'm ready, okay, whenever I'm actually under contract. Okay. And that would be uh, the final step of what you need to do when you go under contract. If you have any questions on that, please do not hesitate to reach out to us, support at scottleroymarketing.com. We'd be more than happy to help you. All right, guys, hope this helped. Congrats on going under contract. <laughs> Take care.